it's Melissa here and today I want to make another stitching layout with my June hip kit. One of my Instagram followers requested a bit more detail on how I do my stitching. Now right now I have corrupted a video that I made. Um, it was entirely my fault but I had a little segment in there on how I do my stitching. So my husband right this minute is trying to recover some files that I deleted. So if that's successful then um, you'll see that in that video as well. But I'm going to show you on here anyway. So this is really in the instance that that is unsuccessful but it's always worth showing you I guess anyway. So this one I have taken the exclusive cut files. And so I've taken the summer fun and the feathers and I've enlarged the feathers and positioned them how I want them and then I've welded them together on my silhouette software and then I've sketched them just using a normal pen. I've got an attachment that you can put a normal pen in with and what I've done and I had done this the other day but um, the light was terrible so I <laughs> deleted that video purposefully but all I'm doing is just piercing along the line and I use an, a really old Amy Tangerine hole piercer oops, in a mat so I'm not going to do all this on camera so this is what I use and you see it's got heaps of holes in it now what I do find is I put my mat underneath because if I don't I get little tiny holes on my uh, white paper underneath and um, but before I do that because I want to do two types of stitching on this one I want to stitch around my cut file and I cut it out on this Paige Evans um, I think it's Oh My Heart yeah Oh My Heart paper with all scallops and you can't really tell it's scallops but I love the way it looks with just different um, colours and patterns on it and so what I'm going to do as if this will cooperate. <clears throat> Sorry, I've had a lot of issues with glue lately and gluing things down and bottles are not working. I had a fine line bottle that was just rubbish. It didn't work. It was a cheap and nasty one. So I am going to fight again. Oh no, here we go. So I want to glue this down and I want to glue it fully. Um because I'm stitching around it so okay what I think I might do is um, interrupt this bit of the video I will speed this bit up and I will see you on the other side Okay, so while that dries, I'm going to show you how I stitch. So what I've got here, she asked me what needles. Now, I have lost my embroidery needle that comes with that Amy Tangerine kit, but I just went to our warehouse, which is like a department, a cheap department store, and I got darning needles, and it came with six needles, that, like that. They are size 5 bar 0 to 1 bar 0. I have no idea what that means. I guess that's half I don't know, half to one. I don't really know what that means. Came with that as well, which is quite handy for threading. So the other needle I had is this really massive one, and these are called tapestry needles. So this is huge, but they get even bigger, so you get three in there. Suitable for wool and yarn. So that's what I've been using um, when I've been doing other stitching, like stitching... Um, Let's say I was going to stitch these scallops, I'd probably use this bigger needle. But because these feathers are so fine, um, I've decided to go with a smaller needle. So I have taken, I guess it's called a skein, I think it's called a skein or a yard of thread. And they come in um, six, oops, stuck over there. Each one has got six threads that make up one I guess it's a skein and so when you do cross stitch you often separate them in half and so you get three so I've done that with this because I know that these um, are very fine and my holes are quite close together so this is what I do I do a basic back stitch so I'm going to start here and go up that hole and 
Hmm. I think I'm going to skip ahead to that one. Now, this is what I do. A lot of people do washi, but I guess because I'm an embroiderer from way back, started cross-stitching when I was 14, I'm going to tie a knot because that, to me, makes more sense than adding washi. And then I know for sure that is secure. So, basic back stitch. I want to go the next hole, which is that one there. A, oh, actually, that's not going to work, is it? No. So, yeah. Sorry, guys. Now, I'm working on this feather. Because I've welded it, I don't want to go across the, the, weld, the hole, the weld. So I'm going to go down into that hole there. And then I'm going to jump ahead to yeah, this one. And then I'm going to go back to here. Now I'm hoping I'm not going to see any of the black pen. Um, I did try to do this with a pencil, but before I say that, I'm going to jump ahead to this hole. And pull it up. And then I'm going back. So basically I'm doing every second hole, I'm coming up and then I'm going back. Sorry, that's my printer. I don't know what is printing there. So bring it up and take it back. Okay. So through to here and take it back. Sorry, my printer is printing. I can't do anything about that. Um, what I was going to say is that oh, you want to make sure that your thread at the back doesn't get caught either. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so I had um, tried using my pencil which wasn't sharp enough and it just didn't work so I had to rub it all out, all the holes. Now what my intention is, is to do white and pink. So I'm going to do white, maybe to there, and then some pink, and then some white. And with this one I'll go probably pink, white, pink. So I don't want this to be too crazy. It's quite subtle. I like white on white, and um, I really want you know this to be a feature as well. So what I might do is see here I can do it without looking I use my finger on the back as a guide and then I push my needle up when I hit my finger with the needle if that makes sense and that way it can be quick and I like to do this in front of Netflix every evening well not every evening but when I have time so or if I'm not too tired so I'm going to get to the end of there now what I do to tie a knot is I push it back and through, pull it tight, push it through, through the knot, through the loop and pull it off. Now, I would advise that you trim off these because if you don't, they can end up coming through to the other side and you can get a bit of a mess. So, there we go. That is how I do that. Now, the other type of stitching I wanted to do with this is stitch around the um, cut file and so I think um, yeah so all you need to do for that is just punch or pierce sorry use the edge of the cut file as a guide pierce holes around like this and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a full skein or partial like I'm doing on that one um, yeah I it doesn't bother me that this isn't entirely perfect like there you'll see I've left a big gap but no one's gonna look at your page and go oh that's not even it's the overall impact okay see there I'm gonna make a choice when I come to stitch I'm probably gonna skip that one you can skip a hole too if it's too close I have found that if I've put them too close I can end up with rips so it's just making that decision now that might be difficult too we'll see how that goes um, yeah when you get curves you have to be careful how you do it so anyway what I'm gonna do with that is I want that in white as well but I think that I may do um, 
solid thread, so the six um, pieces. Now, of course, I haven't sorted this before I've gone live. Um, yeah, let's see. So I think I'm still going to go with the smaller needle. Um, I'll just show you that if you get one of these and don't know what to do, you poke it through the hole, put your thread through, and I like to lick the end, and then you just pull it through. Oh, well, let's ignore that. It's uh, cheap and nasty. We're going to throw it away. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a fail. I actually find the best way to do it is just by licking the end, and I push the licked end together, push it through my needle, and oops, pull it through. So I'm going to quickly show you how I will stitch this one, and then um, I'm not going to show you any more. I will stitch away, and next time you see me, I'll be working on the layout. So I'm not going to start there. I'm just going to start here. So I'm going to pull it up. Let's actually, I don't really want to start on a curve, I want to start on a straight bit. So once again, I have pulled it through, tying a knot. So I do a loop, I'm holding the end, I do a loop, and I put my needle under that and pull it through the loop and pull it tight. So let's see, where are we here? Okay, so I want to go to this hole, and same thing. Oops. So this thread is not the best. It's a little bit cheap and so you can get knots in it. So when you get a knot, if you pull gently, the knot will come undone. So once again, jumping ahead one. So it's called back stitch because I'm going in a backwards direction. So once again, skipping the hole I've just been in, going to the next hole. Sorry, I hope you can see that. And pulling it through. So you can see there I've got two different effects, two different types of um, stitching I guess. One is stitching a sketch of a cut file and the other is stitching around the cut file. Another thing I could do is um, stitch on a cut file. I've done that as well. My um, diggers one, diggers stitching. What am I trying to say? The layout is all about my son's love for diggers. Now, it's one of the corrupted files, so you may not see... You're going to see a video, but you may not see the stitching on it. That was the one where I had a tutorial. So, you'll see what I mean when you see the video. Okay. So, loving how this is looking. Once again, I can use my finger, and I push my needle at the back, and because I've got my index finger at the back there, um, I can guide the needle. See like that? I can guide the needle with that finger where I want it to go. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I love that I'm able to do embroidery, particularly cross stitch and back stitch on my layouts. I think it adds a lot. It's definitely time consuming, but um, what I've found is I enjoy the process of stitching. I enjoy the process of making my layouts. It's therapeutic for me and um, I am just no good at rushing and just chucking something together. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and next time you see me I will be back to do the rest of the layout. So um, have an awesome time and I will see you literally now straight away but it's gonna take me some probably maybe a couple of hours to stitch all this so I'll be back take care so I'm back and as you can see my stitching is done it was really time consuming it was easy to stitch around the word but the feathers were difficult because the cut file was so fine and the holes were really close together and um, it just took a bit more patience and I'm really happy with the result though so here I'm just adding a border strip on the top and I've cut it so that some of the polka dot is evident and you can see on the top right there's a little blue triangle and that's just a piece of the paper and it's um, it doesn't bother me it's part of the bigger piece and I think it looks kind of different so I'm just going with it because I did want that black and white to show and that's the only way I could get it was to include that little piece so I've just glued that down and now I'm moving on to my photo. I did think about using this piece 
but um, it couldn't, it didn't work. I, I tried cutting it with the hearts there, but it just didn't look right. I tried this piece, and that also didn't work because it's introducing a blue, which I don't have aside from that tiny little piece in the corner. I don't have that in the layout. So in the end, I decided just to give some lift with some foam, and um, and I like the way that by having no more paper on this page, it really lets the eye focus on the stitching. So it's a very clean layout for me. Um, I just wanted to have a little bit of embellishment poking out from behind the photo because um, otherwise it's a little bit too bare. So I just pulled this flamingo because I think um, Brielle looks kind of like a fling flamingo in the back of his aria there. And before I went any further, I decided to glue this down because I knew I could um, still poke things underneath that photo. So I was looking at those Amy Tangerine um, Hustle and Heart pickers, but I couldn't make them work either. And I didn't want to take away from the summer fun because I thought if I put something on the top, it was just going to become another title and it's quite bold colours in that collection. So I have added these Oasis stickers. I've popped that one there up with some dimension. I did want to pop that other one up but it was too late because I'd stuck it down. So I've gone with that Bella Boulevard You and Me Puffy sticker and then I'm not 100% happy about this but I went with it. I stuck the Good Time sticker at the top but once again it was too late to pull it off so I thought let's go with it and just add another sticker and I added yay. So here I am trimming off the excess and that is pretty much the layout. All I'm doing now is adding my journaling and just talking about the friendship that these two have as sisters and how I want it to continue. I've probably journaled this before, but it's, um, it's an ongoing um, thing that I pray for my girls, that they'll have great friendships, and with Sam as well. So that is my layout. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on um, stitching, and I will be back soon with some more layouts. Take care.